Well, welcome to our service here at Fountain Heritage for this Good Friday, a really special service uh, for us as Christians, thinking about the day that Jesus died. Imagine this, you saw a person and they're wearing um, a necklace and it's a beautiful, beautiful necklace. It's, it's gold, it's very intricate. And then you see what's at the bottom of the necklace, what's on the necklace. And you see an electric chair. And you think, how odd. Why would you have a symbol of death? That's what we have everywhere. We get used to seeing it. The cross on our church, the cross at the very center of our church. People wear crosses. You see crosses everywhere. And we lose the impact of that, I think. The cross is a terrible way to be killed and a dreadfully sad thing. So why is it that we call it Good Friday? What is so good about Jesus dying on the cross? And that's what we're going to be thinking about today. This is perhaps one of the strangest Easter's uh, we've ever had. A lot of us, we're all in isolation. And it's almost as if there is a uh, no entry sign just outside our gates, just inside our houses. We are not allowed out, except for essential reasons, not allowed out of our property. We're not allowed, this is no entry. Well, what we're going to see about today is that the problem that we have right now of isolation and not being able to go out into the world is actually a much smaller problem than our biggest problem, which is our isolation from God himself. And that is what we're going to be thinking about today. Jesus sorting out the problem of isolation between us and God. I think we realise that isolation is a problem. It's incredibly difficult to endure. Every week it gets harder and harder. But the difficulty of isolation right now in the world is small compared to the difficulty we have in isolation to God himself. In Jerusalem, in the temple, there was a curtain. And it was a very big and very thick curtain. It separated what was the Holy of Holies, where God lived, behind the curtain, to the rest of the temple where others could go, and even outside the temple where others were. God lived behind the curtain, and we were cut off from him. We were isolated from him for our own protection. God is very good. He is perfect. And if you take something perfect and, and, and someone who's not perfect goes in there, we're going to mess it up. That's a problem, our isolation between us and God. And that is a problem Jesus has come to deal with by his death on the cross. And we're going to find that today. Let's say a prayer as we start our service. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Only Son to make a wretch. 
Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him shaking their heads and saying, 
you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. The cross is, is the symbol at the very heart of the Christian faith. It unites all Christians. That's why we see it everywhere and in every church. It is central to our faith. And the reason is this. Jesus, for us, became isolated from the world and his friends. We saw that last night in Monday, Thursday, if you could join us. Jesus' friends betraying him, denying him, abandoning Jesus. And now today we see a depth of isolation from Jesus at the cross, because not only Does the world reject him and kill him? God the Father forsakes his son at the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, Jesus bore our punishment for us. He died for us instead of us. He bore that forsakenness of God so that we don't have to. Jesus is the substitute 
for us so that we can be forgiven by God. <laughs> What's going on here? Nothing. Nothing. <gasps> you did what? Now that was a very naughty thing to do. But you can either go to your bed and be told off or I will go to your bed and be told off for you. One of the things that I see that Christianity is different from every other religion that I can think of is that every other religion seems to say, if you want to get to God or you want to get to heaven or salvation, you need to be good enough. Christianity says, you can't be good enough for God. He's perfect. We're not. Christianity says, you need forgiveness. Christianity says, you need Jesus to die on the cross for you so that you can be saved. It's not actually about what we do. It's about what Jesus has done and our response to that, our love of him to that, our following of Jesus because of that. Jesus is the way into God's presence. So why is Good Friday good? Why is the cross the centerpiece of Christianity? Well, it's because of this. Jesus said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he became forsaken by God. And he became isolated from the world for us instead of us. And listen again what happened after he died. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Do you see what Jesus has done? Jesus has made a way into God's presence. Jesus has taken away the do not enter sign. Jesus has stopped us being in isolation from God. Jesus has given us forgiveness and he's given us access to God himself. Not because of what we have done, but, but because of what he has done on the cross. Good Friday is good because it is only because of Jesus. It is only because of his death on the cross that we can come and be united with God himself who loves us and wants us to come into his kingdom, to come into heaven. You are not alone. God has come to us in the person of Jesus Christ to make a way that we can be with him forever. The cross, although it looked like a time of despair, was actually the triumph the triumph for Jesus to bring salvation to people all over the world, that we can come to know God and be in his presence forever. That is the triumph of the cross. That is why Good Friday is so good. That is why the cross is the center of Christian faith, because Jesus has done for us what we could not do for ourselves. He has given us and granted us forgiveness by his death on the cross. Oh Lord, you've 
We're now going to spend some time thinking about the cross and how it affects our lives today. In 1 Peter 2.24, it says this. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. I wonder what that means for you. When Jesus went up onto the cross, he took 
Oh, sins. He took my sin and laid it upon his shoulders. Up until that point, that's what God saw. He saw my sin when he looked at me. When Jesus died, his blood covered my sin. So that when God looked at me, he saw Jesus and the sacrifice he made for me. Because Jesus is my saviour and I am in him and he is in me. God does not see my sin. He sees Jesus. Before that to happen, we must repent. We must say sorry. It is right to say sorry. And we all mess up. But Jesus paid a price for me. He paid the price for you. So that his blood covers us. And we can be with our father. It's nothing what we have done. But only what he has done. Let's just spend some time thinking about what that means in your life. And what things you have to give up. And that needs covering by Jesus' blood. So I invite you, with the cross that you made last week, that you may put your sins on it, the things that you do not want in your life, the things that are wrong, the things that separate you from God, and to cover it in red, symbolising Jesus' blood, the beauty of Jesus' blood, as that is the thing that brings us back to God. Good morning, everybody. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we come before your throne of grace, love and help. Today we remember the pain and suffering of Jesus as he hung there on the cross. We thank you for that love and sacrifice that he demonstrated. We thank you because of that amazing love we can now know him and receive your forgiveness and the gift of eternal life. We come to you today because we know that you are the God, the one true living God who hears our prayers. We lay before you the world and its fight against this coronavirus which has caused so much fear, worry, and destruction. 
we bring before you the families who have lost their loved ones. And as the God of comfort, the God of peace, please bring peace and healing to the bereaved, peace and healing for all those who are sick. So let us pause for a moment and bring silently before the Lord all those we love and know and need our prayers. Amen. Father God, we thank you that when we look to you and seek your face in times of trouble and stress and anxiety, you are the God who holds our hands because you are our God who is our rock, our refuge, our strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. We pray for all governments around the world and especially our government and ask you that at this time they may turn to you for wisdom and in how to move forward. We remember Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, and ask that in this troubled time for him, he will seek you and find healing. And for all those who are in hospital and in isolation, may they find your peace, your love and assurance of your tender care. We bring before you all those around the world who are starving and unable to get medical treatment. Please Reveal, reveal yourself to them. And as they seek your face, and as they cry out to you, bring healing and wholeness and provide for all their needs. We pray and thank you for the NHS and all those doctors and nurses and all staff and all those who seek to help and save lives. Please, Lord, bless them, strengthen them, in these difficult times. We bring before you our family and friends that we are unable to visit, all those we long to see and hug and love. Please keep them in the comfort of your tender care, under the shadow of your wing. Please protect and may they know your peace, your presence, your touch and comfort in their lives. 
We pray, Lord, that in these troubled times, many people around the world will look to you for the answers to life and all that is going on. And through seeking you, they will look to the cross and in the cross find an experience. The Lord Jesus. We pray for the church around the world. And on this special day, as we look to the cross, we ask you to strengthen us. Keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus so that we will not grow weary or lose heart. And to the world, we will be able to sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. So, Father, today we offer our lives to you. We rec recommit ourselves to you and ask on this amazing day we will know and experience the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit as we look to our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We offer you our hearts, our thoughts, our prayers, believing and trusting that you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, will hear our prayers. For we ask all these prayers in the name of our Lord and Saviour, King Jesus. Amen.
We are not alone. We don't need to be isolated anymore. God has come in the person of Jesus Christ to give us a way into his presence because Jesus died on the cross. Standing at the foot of the cross, as Jesus Christ taught us, so we pray the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.